The city. My city. A city of despair and hope. A city of donuts and pretzels. A city of brown starfish and hot dog water. A city of rainbow parties. Look it up, it's a thing. It is super hot. It's all the way live. But the city is my city. I'm not the guardian they appointed. I'm the guardian they demanded. Joker! Oh god, is this one of those crossover fanfics? This is the DC Deck Builder. Uh, it's made by a company called Cryptozoic. So the DC Deck Builder is part of a series of deck builders. Uh, in this series you have the main DC Deck Builder, Heroes United, and then we will have a follow-up that is the villains. So the first thing each player is going to do is we're each going to draw a random superhero from the random pile. So I will be the Martian Manhunter. After that, we're each going to get seven punches. Punches are worth one power and we're going to take three vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities are worth absolutely nothing. Basically, vulnerabilities just take up space in your deck. We'll shuffle it all together, and we'll draw five cards. I'm going to use my three power to purchase something off the lineup. Because I'm playing the Martian Manhunter, I would normally want to purchase either a hero or a villain. However, I do not have enough power to do that. So instead, I will look at the cards available to me and pick the x-ray vision. So the cost on this card is three. It doesn't give me any extra power but it has a special ability. After that I will take all of the cards that I used in that turn and I will place them in my discard pile. Then I will draw five more cards and that is the end of my turn. Starting the next turn the next player will have his five cards in hand and then will draw out the next card and place it into the lineup. The way we achieve victory in this game is that through the power available to us in our hands we will eventually have enough to purchase the supervillains. As I purchase the supervillain I would put it into my discard pile just like any other card I would use and the next player will flip over the following supervillain. Each time a supervillain is revealed, there's a first appearance attack. So a lot of times the villains are a bit of an issue. Once all the villains have been purchased, we will use the stars in the bottom corner of the cards, each ranging in value between one and about six and tally up the total amount of victory points that we have. Once we figure out who has the most victory points, they're declared the winner, and we go on. And what else could you want? Justice! <laughs> Today I am playing the Green Lantern. Today I'm playing Aquaman, the most underrated superhero ever. I'm Batman. Right, I have three power. Uh, I am going to purchase, I'll purchase, yeah, I'll purchase Poison Ivy. And then I draw out five, and it is Jeff's turn. Uh, I will use my four punches to buy Supergirl, who is going to be Aquaman's girlfriend. 
Oh, and uh, I may put any cards of cost five or less you buy on the top of my deck. Well, there you go. So I put that there. Yep, and then draw out five. Two, three, four, five. Awesome. Three punches. Two of these wussy vulnerabilities and buy me the power ring. Each foe reveals the top card of his deck. Uh, you may play one of the non-location cards. So everybody reveal top card. Punch. Okay. Punch. I'll use his punch. Uh, that gives me five to spend. I'll take cheetah and a kick. And then Jeff, if you'll replace that next card. So I will play the Titan's Tower, which is a location, mm -hmm. and I leave it in front of me for the rest of the game. Yep. When I play my first card with cost two or three on each of my turns, draw a card. And so I will, for three, I will buy a kick, but since it costs three, I will draw another card. Three punches, and then the power ring, which says reveal the top card of your deck. If it's cost one or greater, plus three power, otherwise plus two. Obviously, it was Shitsville, so plus two. Total of five. So I'll just pick up this guy. Aquaman is under the sea, and punches don't do as much damage as a nice seahorse kick. Attack. Each foe discards the top card of his uh, the top card of his deck. If it is great, one cost one or greater, uh, that player gains a weakness. So. No, it's a kick! So you gain a weakness. No! Because you discard five. Is that an attack? Yes. You oh, may defend, wait. absolutely. Alright, I will throw <laughs> Why this. Why is that a funny clock? I will put this vulnerability into this card, but with my six power, I will take. Ooh, I will take heat vision. If you destroy it, does it go away? Yes, destroy, yeah, destroy means, means it's gone. Destroy means it's out of play. And because I, I uh, played my first card, which was a kick, I get to draw one, which is a punch. That doesn't do me any good. I'll play it and purchase Riddler. Ba -da -ba -ba. Inth Metal. Ah, Hawkman. You know the Inth Metal in his belt allows him to fly. You know what the Inth Metal in my belt allows me to do? I, I don't want to know. I guess we need to put this down. Yeah. <gasps> Aquaman's Trident! I will pay three for Aquaman's Trident now! Oh, now! Wow, he's equipment sniped out of the marketplace. And there's another Aquaman. Ooh, Trident. I can have two. Except for. No, you he's can't. Yeah. yeah. You totally can't. Um, I pay three. I'll purchase him. I will buy Suicide Squad. It was kick and doesn't go to your hand. Aquaman, I know. So play kick and Aquaman, and I get to put Suicide Squad on top of my deck. Your turn. Yep, Jeff, it's your turn. I will buy the first villain. Good. First appearance attack for Deathstroke. Uh, each player reveals his hand and destroys a hero, superpower, or equipment hand in his discard pile. So I laid out Robin, I'll play Nth Metal, I look at the top card of my deck, if I want to I can destroy it. I will definitely do that. Uh, I play... Uh, I play Chia, she allows me to gain a card of cost four or less, so I'll gain Robin. Yeah, <laughs> cheated in Robin. My yeah. young warden. Um, I will play Poison Ivy, which is an attack. Uh, so I attack everybody, discard the top card of your deck. If it costs one or greater, that player gains a weakness. Super speed defense! Okay. Bulletproof defense. Good deal. Uh, I will reveal the top card of each of your decks, and I will play one of them. Punch! Punch. Okay, so I have a punch. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine. 
Um, what's Deathstroke's power? I will take him. The next villain is the Joker. First appearance attack. Each player puts a card from his hand into the discard pile of the player to his left. If the card you received has a cost of one or greater, put a weakness on top of your deck. Vulnerability. Bunch. Alright. Oh, he goes to the discard pile. Yes. Riddler, have a weakness. Okay. So I'll take my heat vision and all these, and I will buy Doomsday. So I will play that, and then play another kick, and then play another kick, so I have six. And then I will pay ten and get Joker. Joker. The Joker. At the end of my turn, put this card on bottom of its owner's deck before drawing a new hand. Because Razagol never dies. The Lazarus Pit lets him do that. See? I know. All right, Felix Faust. First appearance, set one card in your hand in front of you, then pass each remaining card in your hand to the player to your left. Repeat this process until no cards remain in the player's hands. So what do we do? Okay, so you, you take set one, one card, card out of your hand. Yes. Right. Okay, I'm taking one card out of my hand, and then I pass you my deck, and we draft it out. Oh, we're just doing a little mini draft? Yeah. All right. Oh, that just blows. Well, actually, you know what? Yeah, it's a good chance to try and get super, some... super blows for me. There you go. Good fucking luck there. <laughs> Punch. Awesome. You get vulnerability or weakness. Awesome. You get a weakness. Hey. You hit again, my young ward. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked you both. Fuck both of you. Ooh, Mara. Hey, I want her. She looks Five, aquatic. Six, seven. No, she's not. Maybe she is. What is this? The watchtower dude. I'm buying super strength. Fuck the rest of you. The Dark Knight. Ooh. I play the Wait, you can buy me? Yep, pretty much. Uh, I'll destroy it. Uh, each car, each player discards top card of the deck. If it's cost one or greater, you... Uh, oh, kick. You know, get a weakness. No! Defense. Avoid an attack. Draw Kay. two cards as a result. Uh, I have four, so I buy uh, Mira. And I have up to eight, so two more of these. Oh, this is worth two, so I will buy Super Strength. And at five extra, I'll just buy myself. Go ahead. Each foe reveals the top card of his deck. Doomsday! Oh, you don't even need to, nah. I'm gonna take Doomsday. Oh. Now, do I put him over this card or not? Yeah. Uh, no, you just reveal it. Okay. No, I get to reveal it anyway, so... Oh, yeah. Okay. Alright, uh, so I'll take the four power from him. Uh, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and I gain any card of cost four or less from the lineup. Oh, just buy him an endless trade. And then buy that. Yeah. And then I'll put this It down. doesn't matter, game's over. Game's over. Alright. This game has several... This game has several problems. First of which is that normally you're not allowed to select your own superhero, which to me seems like a real problem because when people come into a game, especially a game with a built-in canon like DC Comics, you already have your favorite character. So, I mean, if you don't want to play Green Lantern, but you get stuck with Green Lantern, you kind of feel like a heel. The problem is, is that each of these cards, while they do a good job trying to fit like the theme or the feel of what that superhero is like, the real problem, in my opinion, is that you, unless you unless the marketplace bears out those right cards, you never really seem to get ex to exploit their abilities. When you uh, do get to, it's super. But it's it's like with Superman and Batman, for example, it's super dependent on whatever the hell comes out of that marketplace. Mm -hmm. And if the right cards don't come out and don't get sniped out by somebody, it never hap It never helps. I also find that. <laughs> It seems like this game is less about trying to make sure op deck optimization and building a deck, and more about trying to mitigate bloat. 
but I guess a bloat a bloat mitigation game doesn't sound as catchy. I like playing Aquaman and kicking and punching my way to victory. It was really neat. Um, Supergirl kicked your way to victory. Let's yeah. Super good. Yeah, Supergirl, yeah. who's Aquaman's girlfriend, won the game for me, just like in real life, where my girlfriend wins the game for me. Uh, so I've played this game a lot, and I have enjoyed it most of those times. Uh, now, there is, there is some things with it. It's really easy to hate by. Like, it's easy to pull things away from other players. This is probably the worst case scenario where there's absolutely nothing in the economy to purchase. Um, that really, really bogs the game down. Like, it really did. To be fair, this does operate a bit better than Marvel's uh, yeah. contender here, which is legendary. So, it, it, that This is a stronger entry into it, but I still feel like as a deck-building game, it's got a lot of problems in it. Um... Well, I think that's the nature of any deck builder, though, is that if you talk to competitive players in that genre, they want games to be that you can hate buy because uh, it's a strategy. Right. Uh, it's and just it's like dra it's just like too. drafting in Magic. You can hate draft. In, Absolutely, in it's Magic. completely valid to snipe out uh, stuff. My my only other experience with the deck building Zerk game is, we, and I, is uh, I played the Resident Evil deck building game, which and is very different. Yeah, and yeah. we and we played as teams, and I got the guy that lets me carry a bunch of equipment, and then my friend Scott, who owns the game, he got a guy that steals equipment, and that was not fun at all for me because it completely negated my power, and so I like this game way better than that one. Admittedly, because, like admittedly, there yeah. are some combinations in this game that are really cool. Like Jeff honestly had a really cool combination, where he was very capable early on of controlling the economy, which is a viable option for winning. I mean, and he, having a superpower that's agnostic yeah. to whatever's on the marketplace is yes. really potent. Yes, yeah. it really is. Um, Diana, uh, uh, Wonder Woman is also super powerful because when Do you she... Do Diana? Are you guys Facebook friends? Yeah, she is. Yeah. She's my Facebook friend. So when... Well, because there's the Diana card uh, in there. So when you purchase a villain, you then get to draw more cards the next turn. Uh, she ends up becoming super powerful early game. Had we had a longer game, I think my economy would have, you know, worked out a little better. But Jeff just was so good at controlling it early on that there was nothing. Well, I mean, he was, was just... There, I was kept, a, there was a kick yeah. gap. Yeah. There was a kick gap. Well, and like it I was said, a Kickstarter. normally, like that really, seven and six across the board is... <laughs> I couldn't buy anything. Really, like hard. I don't. No one that. could until yeah. we until we basically had exhausted the kick pile, and even then we had to wait for certain combinations of draws to happen. Yeah. Right. Which is why I think like this game would be vastly improved if it took the note from high. And this is the last time we'll talk about high command. I swear. Yeah. But if they took the note from high command of every time you have to shuffle your draw deck back, you have the opportunity to cull one card. See, that out. would be really nice. That actually would be really really nice because it that would keep this game dramatically and changes it much. Much more well paced because it would now have you to can't be, bog yourself down. It would have to be specific to you can take a starter card out. Okay, I can and even, rather I can than agree taking that. the weaknesses out. Right. Because right. Weaknesses, weaknesses is a strategy. Are really supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a strategy that people can use to. Like I, I've, I have. Bought, I can agree to that. I, when you're playing Diana, or I'm even call any non weakness card. Honestly, yeah, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, because when so. you call those things out of the deck, they're not like counting towards your victory points anyway. I think that would be a good so. change to it. If you're a DC fan. Uh, and a fan of all of the DC Universe, this game will be fun for your friends who aren't playing a lot of uh, playing a lot of board games. I think if you're a hardcore uh, gamer or if you really like deck building games as a genre, I think there are stronger entries in the genre. I'm gonna I'm gonna half agree with Stu. I really think that this is a mid level game. Very very good for people who want to move from basic entry of board games into something a little different. Um, like I said, we've played it a lot, and I really, really enjoy the game. Um, sometimes it's frustrating, as are any game, when you start losing. Um, but all in all, it's a, it's a good, solid game. DC Deck Building, the only place where Aquaman is actually powerful. 
That's a fair point. Thanks for watching. If you like us, subscribe.